Now I have the great pleasure to introduce Dr. Janie Thornton. She is the uh, USDA Deputy Undersecretary for Food, Nutrition, and Consumer Sciences. She was appointed by President Barack Obama uh, as USDA Deputy Undersecretary uh, on April 1st, 2009. And as Undersecretary, she is responsible for improving the health and well-being of Americans by developing and promoting science-based dietary guidance and administering the USDA's 15 nutrition assistance programs. The programs work to end hunger in the United States and provide nutrition assistance, guidance, nutrition policy, coordination, and nutrition education. She has been active in the School Nutrition Association. She served as the president of the association as well as the president of the School Nutrition Foundation. Uh, she's a native of Kentucky. She received her Bachelor of Science degree in Home Economics from Western Kentucky University, a Master of Science in Vocational Education and School Administration from the University of Kentucky, and she received her doctorate from Iowa State University. It is really a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Everybody welcome Dr. Thornton. Well, thank you so much. It is such a pleasure and excitement for me to be here in this beautiful city with you all today and talking about a topic that has been of, of much interest to me, not just since I've been in the White House but or been with the White House, but for many, many years prior to that. I'd like to congratulate you here in California for the great work that you all are doing and in joining together to work, to understand that it takes everybody working together. We can't solve this problem one by one, but everybody needs to work together to see what their role can, can uh, part can be. For the past two years, it's been my great privilege to serve in this Obama administration, which certainly has demonstrated a real commitment to the health and well-being of all Americans. I bring you greetings from Secretary Vilsack and also from Undersecretary Kincannon, who shares the passion of the President and under, both understand the, the need to do all we can to make health, healthier Americans um, a place that, to make this country where everybody can be healthy. Um, at USDA, our two top priorities, in addition to agriculture, are to feeding the American people. It's not just what children eat, it's not just what Americans eat, but it's what they eat. It's not just what they eat, but it's also the frequency and portion sizes of what we eat. We continue to be engaged in many, many activities that support the implementation of the new child nutrition law and advance hunger prevention and nutrition awareness. I'm sure that this group is firmly aware of the fact that we have many, many adults that are over, overweight or obese, but even more alarming is that we have about one-third of our children that are now overweight. I heard on TV this morning as I was getting ready that we now here in the United States consume 470 calories more a day than we did back in the 70s. That is an alarming statistic. They attribute that to larger portion sizes and snacking so much more than we did in the past. So tackling the problem of childhood obesity, not one sector alone, but as a united force can certainly make a difference. I know Sam yesterday mentioned and talked about the First Lady's endeavors in her Let's Move campaign, which started in February of 2010. And that campaign has grown and grown as we add additional sectors to that. We understand that this is truly a societal issue that we're facing right now. It doesn't see um, economic levels. It doesn't see one race or another. It's something that we experience overall everywhere. And we certainly are at a point, I think, people are beginning to understand that we've got to quit 
pointing fingers and placing blame, but instead look in the mirror and see what I can do and the job I have to make a difference and turn this around. The Healthy Hunger Free The Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act that was signed into law by the President in December of this year certainly is the beginning of a great opportunity for those in much of the federal sector as well as in many of the programs that we support nationwide to begin to make a difference. The law reauthorized our child nutrition programs, which include our lunch programs, our breakfast, our, our many of our after school programs, uh, child and adult care feeding programs, our summer programs, WIC, and others. These programs are primarily designated to feed nutritious meals to combat childhood hunger, and at the same time, healthy meals that will help prevent our obesity issues. Um, we have literally thousands and thousands of children especially that depend on these meals each and every day as their primary source of nourishment. Another thing that we are really working to do through this legislation is to expand access to our school food programs for the thousands of children um, that may not have food otherwise. So as we expand those categories, hopefully we will have more children with food ready to eat. We're also in the process of rene renewing and revising our meal patterns that we have in our school meals. Um, in April, there was public comment on the, the proposed rule. We had about 130,000 plus comments. We are in the process of going through those right now. But this will be the first major improvement to our school meal pattern in the last 15 years. The proposal significantly increases the amounts of fruits and vegetables that are offered to children, which is very, very exciting, substantially increasing our whole grains, um, going to low-fat or fat-free milks, reducing our sodium, our sugar, eliminating trans fats. So really a great opportunity to improve the foods that we serve to children. But we also understand that while we offer healthier foods, it's also important that children consume those foods. So while we are working on increasing uh, the nutritional quality, we've also got to make sure that it will be foods that children will eat. As a part of the First Lady's Let's Move campaign, we have our Healthier U.S. School Challenge, and we've got now about um, 40 plus states that are participating and have had schools in those states that have won the challenge. The schools have to uh, improve nutritional standards in the school, have nutrition education in the school, and have adequate physical activity in the schools. By doing that, we know that that will be at least a start to having the, the kids in that school healthy and ready to learn. We have a goal of achieving over 1,200 healthier U.S. schools by the end of this month, and I think we are well on our way to meeting that goal. Again, participation in the programs is a critical part of that. Sam may have mentioned yesterday our, our chefs moved to school part of our program. Very exciting for kids to have chefs come in to work with our uh, folks, not only back in the kitchens to uh, find different ways to season food so we can reduce some of the sodium and to come up with some recipes for them that they can do from scratch and not have to use as many uh, prepared products. But they also go into the to the classroom and talk to the students, which is very, very exciting for them. I'm also hopeful that as the chefs work with schools, they'll become a little bit more aware of some 
uh, appropriate serving sizes because serving sizes in restaurants now has really gotten totally out of hand. Um, I have been in some that literally one serving would be enough for a family of four. So we need to really watch as we are working with our youth to make sure they understand that portion size is critical. We also have been working with recipes for Healthy Kids Challenge and have had huge competition with students working with chefs around the country. Our finals will take place with a cook-off at the American Culinary Federation's annual meeting in Dallas uh, in July of this month. Sam Cass will be there working with the kids, so it will be a great excitement for all. We will actually then publish a lot of the recipes so districts around the country will have access to healthy, kid-approved recipes to be able to use in the, the school kitchens and cafeterias. We've also worked with athletes from the National Football, Football League, Major League Baseball, and the President's Fitness Council to promote physical activity because we know in addition to eating right, physical activity is critical to a, a child's physical and being well health, uh, being healthy.